doable. You get him four or five catches a game, and yep. you know you see that one catch that he made, and he he makes a couple misses, and he's getting like 15, 20 yards. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get a couple like that. I mean, that's that's a good game. You know, oh, plus yeah. his whatever rushing yard he's going to have. He didn't break that century oh, yeah. mark, but uh, he you know Close. you look across the the field there, and he's playing against the best running back right now, yeah. and he mm -hmm. outplayed him. Yeah, but, yeah. It was, yeah. yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, definitely. I'm not sure that would sure that didn't go unnoticed um, by Josh Jacobs with all the talk about Christian McCaffrey. Um, I do. Like, Rashard and um, and and um, Devontae did a good job in this game. Um, I, I thought I thought receiving. I thought the one thing I, I saw in a lot of the videos of practice is that when I saw um, Booker um, catch the ball out of the backfield. With, with a lot of passes from Derek, it was very fluid. Like I, I knew that was gonna be a part of his game. So he, he had, on that on that last drive, he did a good job of that. Um, and also, before um, Carlson hit that 54 yard field goal, which was I'm telling you that good good for him because I did, I did not have any faith in that ball was gonna yeah. that he was gonna make that. But the the play before that on third down, great job by Zay Jones blocking and all the extra yardage that. Um, that uh, Jalen Rashard was able to get to get him in position for that field goal. It yep. was a big. Oh, those three points were huge because it changes the. They're up by one instead of up by four. That last drive is totally different. So, um, you know, if you guys can mention about you know thoughts about the backfield as a whole because spelling Josh Jacobs and giving him giving the team the opportunity to um, you know give him a little rest was, was really was really important for this team. Yeah, I, I know, Sean, you mentioned it on Twitter the other day that you, you got to raise your hand and say I wasn't big on having um, mm. uh, what's-his-face come out. And um, you know what? He, he's, he made some plays, and Gruden dialed some good plays up for him. Everything but that end red zone play that was like mm. two-yard pass, that was the, probably the only thing I'd probably be critical about. But he came in, and, and, and it was a good change of pace. Um, I like with Richard's position, though. You know, you put him in on third down, let him run out, let him run a wheel out, route or whatever, something underneath. Um, but yeah, if you get Booker and, and Jacobs healthy, you just keep it going. Ooh, I am a little worried that the style of play that Jacobs runs, I mean, you saw him on one play, just literally run right through somebody, yeah. you know, he put his head down and that's scary. I don't, I mean, that scares me because he's a physical player, but he's got to last 16 games plus, you know, yeah. and I don't, I mean, play, play tough, but play smart. And, you know, what's funny about that is Booker was such a good product coming out of Utah. Like, he was uh, – and we just saw him go flat in Denver. For whatever reason it was, we won't understand. But I'm just looking at his stat line here. He had three receptions for 23 yards. So that's 7.7 mm -hmm. 7 a catch. And on the ground, I believe he had um, – he was averaging, like, five a carry or something like that too so he was like extremely productive and he got flanked out at wide receiver i love that i love seeing us do that and guess what who was supposed to do that for us this year the guy that ain't on the team anymore <laughs> ain't on the gravy train like Dwayne said Bowden, you're gone pj hall you show up fat you're gone guess what booker came in um he was a little bit of an underdog to make the team and he busted his butt and gruden saw the right character traits and in combination with the physical traits and I'm, I couldn't be happier. As a skeptic, I'm happy to be proven wrong because I really think that helps solidify our backfield. We know what Jalen can do, but that pushes his role back to something a little bit more specific. And, uh, yeah, Booker was, to me, was one of the biggest shocks when I was watching the team. He made some critical, critical plays. It's nice when Josh Jacobs goes to get a Gatorade bottle on the sideline yes. and Booker's getting you a first down. I mean, exactly. you can't beat that. And that causes teams – and normally want to just stack the box so Booker's in, or we don't have to account for that guy. He's keys the two, three down back. We're not going to worry about him. Well, there's some things on film where people have to know where he's at on the field. Good, yeah. good call on the staff, uh, Gruden and everyone, uh, and Ken. <laughs> Ken, Ken, Ken. I vouch for him. Yeah, I he vouched for him. Credit due, credit But due. it is Booker week one. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah it is. One. But regardless, hey, man, he, he, he put something out there that I didn't expect. So it's a good thing. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Good thing for, exactly. Um, uh, offensive line, listen, the guy, talk about you. I mean, it's not about eating crow. It's about, like, I, I'm glad to be proven wrong when it comes to the Raiders. Um, you know, because, you know, the, the negative thoughts do come into your mind once in a while. Uh, <laughs> well, it, do, it doesn't help when Sean's over there trying to get oh, you, you, you know. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much, yeah, pretty much, hold on. 
Yeah. Pretty, I understand, but um, but um, I do. I wasn't thrilled about getting getting Tom Cable back, um, but I gotta say, man, like he has been phenomenal. He has been he's been great. And whenever somebody does get hurt, it's next man up, and you don't gotta worry about it. And I, I know even when even when Trent Brown, you know, people were texting me and DMing me, oh my God, Trent Brown's out. It's, it's gonna be Sac City. I mean, zero. Yeah. Zero. zero pressures, yeah. zero sacks. Yeah. I mean, the, the un, it was an unbelievable performance by that offensive line. And it's like you know, Derek Brown. It, it, Derek Brown showed up and made some plays. He, he's 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 a pretty good he's a pretty good ta- pretty good tackle. And oh, Burns yeah. and Burns didn't do. I mean, I didn't know he played yesterday. Like that's the kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. Colton is say what you want, and I understand that. I wanted um, I wanted. Um, Derwin James. Derwin James myself, but he has been. This is the year where if, if he just stays healthy and keeps keeps this keep keep this going, now, now he has to go against Jordan next week, of uh, the Saints. So that's not going to be so, so so that's not going to be easy either. But if he does another good job, keeps doing these jobs of shutting out these top pass rushers, you know, he, he has to get consideration for for a Pro Bowl. That's a really good point. I, I think that you know Derek Carr, what was it like two hurries or three hurries or something like that, didn't get touched. Um, and that defensive line, I mean, it, it's, it's solid. You saw what they did last year. That didn't change much other with the, uh, other than the addition of Brown, um, who was a big boy. Ooh, that boy looked powerful. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, when you got incognito Gabe Jackson and uh, Hudson right in front of you and you're, you're blocking, mm-hmm. it's not going to really matter much. So uh, then you look at the edge. But uh, good, held it down. Pretty good. And, uh, you know, Witten uh, did his part there, too. I know he didn't show up on the stat sheet too much. Um, but you, that's some big boys protecting Carr and giving you, you know, he needs, what, three seconds to get a really good pass out, and that's more than enough time. Um, I, I have nothing but good things to say about the Colton Miller pick. I remember when they selected him, I was like, who? And then I'm like, okay, you know what? It's a left tackle. Uh, was it Mc, McGlinchey or whatever got picked prior Niners. Yeah, to the Niners? I thought that, you know, the Raiders may go there. Uh, I thought it was going to be Derwin James for sure, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, but yeah, there there it is, and and he's got to be considered for a Pro Bowl if he continues what he's doing here because he does. And they well. win, and they win. They got to win yeah. first. They got to win too. Unfortunately, they yeah, win. yeah. And I think I think Incognito and and you go back when Kalechi was playing with the Raiders at that left guard position. Uh, Miller plays better when there's a seasoned vet next to him. When they had a sub come in, he wouldn't yeah. play that well. Mm-hmm. He didn't play that well. But maybe that's the learning thing, thing that he needs to get through. But, uh, yeah, I'm all on board with Miller. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I'm... Miller was great. And the other thing, just to hit on it real quick, like I think it was a combination. We'll get to it later when we talk about kind of what happened with the offense at times. But when those injuries were happening or things, we took a few shots early, right? Went rugs early, second play of the game. Went rugs later. Um, we went Aguilar at one point. But overall, I, I think – what happened is like the game plan shifted a little bit so there was no sacks no pressures but I I gotta normally I'm on Gruden but like on him for his conservativeness but I felt like they kind of had to play the cards that way yesterday they had a comfortable lead they let it slide a little bit but they they just really you don't want Carr taking a five seven step drop it just makes no sense and if you look what Carolina was doing scheme wise they were playing three safeties back at some times I was Unbelievable. I mean, they had Jeremy yeah. Chin, the rookie, three safeties on the field, in the middle of the field, two hashes in the middle, just backed up 15 yards off the line of scrimmage. You're not going to go down the field. You're going to do your little dink and dunks with Renfro, with Waller, misdirection. So the, the Raiders did what they had to do to survive and miss the surprise injuries. But the offensive line, Cable, that that if we're going to be a double-digit uh, win team this, this year, it's going to have to look like what it did Sunday as far as in the trenches. Yeah, I, I thought I thought that he um, did a really good job. This commercial is not coming up. These commercials are just relentless. Michael wants you. Oh my goodness, right Jesus now. Lord! Um, <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of that page. Um, they really want. I'm I'm with the general. I'm not, I'm not going. I'm not going to Geico. Um, <laughs> but I do like how they change. You, you saw some. You saw some. Um, a lot of inside runs, inside runs in between the tackles because that's where the strength was. You have Gabe Jackson, Cognito, and Hudson there, so they kind of made that. They kind of made um, a change there, and then at the end they mixed it up and went outside for the game-winning touchdown. So I, I do. I do like that. That I do like the way they kind of mix the mix the match there. Um, the strength wasn't outside anymore, so don't don't push it towards. 
um, Denzel good if you don't have to in, in, that, in, 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 in that situation. We'll have to wait and see during the week to see what happens with the injury situation. Um, Special teams, um, Carl, I mean, uh, Carlson did a great start. Carlson kicked, kicked, he made the kick he had to make. I mean, if the 54 yarder was huge, so I, I give him a lot of credit for that. Um, yeah, I, I will give him, I'll, I'll give Dom the bomb credit for that because he feels the pressure, he feels the heat, he feels the heat, he feels the heat coming from behind. Um, I would say one thing I'm not I'm thrilled about the, I'm not thrilled about the, um, As the army convoy um, kind of goes by, um, <laughs> um, I, I I do like the fact that he he made those kicks, but I, I don't special teams at all. I, I I just feel like we give up a little bit too much as far oh. as return yard. Your your return yards. I, I realize Farrell Farrell Cooper is a a good returner. He was that with the Rams, but by all means, do not. I mean, this week especially. One thing that Sean Payton thrives on is special teams. You saw it in that game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They were able to make some plays and, and able to um, and, and, and able to get things going um, there as well. So you got to watch. You got to watch that. Um, Carr played well. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's any any way of um, saying it. I think Carr played well. I think he was in total command of everything. Um, the, all, all the plays he had to make, he made. Um, the one the, the throw to the end zone he had to make um, that he made it. I, I thought that. I thought the call. I, all my Eagles fans um, text me immediately after Aguilar caught that ball. Yeah. Of course, as soon as he caught that ball, they were like, "Get out of here with this." <laughs> you know, you know like what I like, Junior? No, no, I like that. You know, oh, yeah, like Junior. Yeah. You know, we we opened up the game, you know, with that bomb to Rugs, and you know, you want to showcase your first round pick. And I went back and I looked at that play a couple of times. I, I know it was a miss, and and at first sight, it looked like he overthrew it. He didn't overthrow it, man. That money was right, that ball was right on the money. But if you look at the cornerback, he kind of almost grabbed yep. in a split second. He grabbed Rugg's arm, which he passed his pass interference. Yeah, and it was it was a blown call in a sense, but it was on the money. So they got to keep doing that. And they, you know, uh, the other mm -hmm. play, the uh, play action that they had uh, Rugg's coming across the the field there. Um, at first, it looked like one of his ducks, you know, kind of one of the floaters. But then if you looked, I, I don't know if it was Chin or the other safety there, he was coming out, had a really good angle on the top. So he put it right in the money there. I think Ruggs kind of slowed down just a little bit. If he would have had that just a little bit more burst or just would have jumped another yard, less mm -hmm. than a yard, he would have got the touchdown. So I was really excited to see them stretch the field. I felt like Ruggs got a lot of playing time or a lot of plays thrown, at his, thrown his way. Um, and you can see this guy's going to be a player. He's going to be a problem for some teams. Once they get the groove going, they get the timing down. Uh, he he can run some routes, man. He gets a, I know they did that flea flicker, and uh, he couldn't. He didn't uh, fall in bounds there, but he oh, still yeah. caught it, and that was really pretty. Uh, you know, Edwards was, has remained to be seen. I know that he did a lot of stuff off off the. Uh, stat line there mm -hmm. you know as far as blocking and running routes and, and whatnot he had a couple good uh, one good catch um i thought Carr did his part he's he played perfect game manager uh you know he protected the ball he got the ball out right he called the right calls uh you know when you anytime you call uh stacy gruden tiger woods you know that's, <laughs> oh, that's incredible yeah. Cindy, that was Cindy. incredible yeah, that, that's that's a recipe for Super Bowl right there. You put that yeah, up the uh, such a great banana. Yeah, yeah. Such, such, such a great audible. I love that. I love that call. Yeah, I I, I, like I thought Carr played very well. I, I thought he did everything. He was in command. I think that's the number one word. Yes, I would agree. Three, wasn't three four touchdowns. It wasn't wow plays. Um, the strike to Aguilar was just a beautiful throw. Like in stride right over the shoulder of the defender right where it needed to be um and that that was a nice thing to see because rugs was on the sideline at the time so to see that he could throw a strike um i think the important thing was is they see man coverage uh carolina played a lot of zone a lot of things off and those concepts you're not going to take a lot of deep strikes against zone at least we didn't have to because we could eat up underneath but that was an impressive throw I do think I know what everyone's talking about. I do think that was a little bit of a hot air balloon throw to Rugs. It should have been a touchdown. I don't think he should have threw it like further. I think he should have flattened the trajectory of the ball, like kind of zipped it in there, and then Rugs could just get it, like, get it in know. faster to him, right? Yeah, Not, yeah, yeah. So yeah. flatten the trajectory. I mean, he threw it like a rainbow, but that, that's kind of picking and choosing. It is what it is. The completion was made. I'm just saying, like those things, throwing ball short behind wide receivers is how you get people hurt. So. Overall, though, Carr across the, the stat line and what he did, perfect command of the offense. He called timeouts when he needed to. He checked out of things when he needed to. It just seemed like 
he is that field general for us. And because Josh Jacobs is so talented, I feel like that's what Carr needs to be. That's like a per he's going to have some games where he's probably going to throw three touchdowns, but I'm okay with a one touchdown, you know, two, 280, no, no zero picks, turnovers, no fumbles, no, uh, yeah. no strange, you know, you know, just, just, just play within the confines of the offense and, and believe in the system. And I think that's what they did. Um, so I was happy to see that. And Ruggs did have two rushes, which was nice, right? We talked about that before. We said, hey, he, he, they're going to get him the ball however they can. And they did. He got a couple rushes as well. So um, had he not got gimped and limped up a little bit, I think he would have been more of like an eight-catch day. He yeah. probably would have eclipsed 100 yards. Yeah. Um, but I think that kind of threw everything off. And then also the pace of the game, he went up double points. So we kind of peeled back a little bit aggressively. But um, good things, good things from Carr. It's everything we, we talked about in this podcast, right? All three of us expected the offense to be humming against this young defense, and uh, it did. Yeah, yeah, they delivered. Uh, you know, it, as some of you guys said, it was a must win, especially coming out the gates. And uh, they, they showed up. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to get into the defense now. <laughs> well, that was the good. Because <laughs> I can't think of any more good uh, that we missed. One last, let me get one last thing in. So yeah. 34 points all from the offense. Nothing yep. was attributed from defensive scores. Was that mm -hmm. outputs anything we scored last year? No yeah. short, no short fields either, right? No short yeah. fields where they got, yeah. where they got, yeah. So I mean, that was that was huge. The only short field we had was when uh, Monster Mash Ken's uh, younger brother Hunter Renfro broke a punt, twenty-seven yards, and brought it out to the forty-nine yard. Yeah, that's that's true. True. which that's was big. Dog. That was good to see. That was good. He to was see. zigging and zagging, man. He was zigging and zagging and wagging. <laughs> I like thirty-four that. points. I mean, thirty. If you can score thirty-four points, I mean, like. Breaking 30 is huge in today's NFL, and you almost yeah. have to do it. There's a lot of there's a lot of shootouts. About half your games are going to be shootouts like that. So. You look at the scores yesterday, just throughout the league. I mean, there were some oh. high-scoring games and some Jeez. lot of yardage. Man, Aaron, awesome. Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers, oh, Minnesota Russell, Russell Seahawks, West, Falcons. Uh, just high-scoring yeah. games. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Um, the, well, we talked about. I know we 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 texted about the snap counts and. I'm going to peel back a little bit of my criticism of, of you know, because I, 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 am, I am not going to lie and say I don't like, I don't, I don't have a, I don't really enjoy watching um, Foster Moreau play. And I like him in the red zone especially. So when they threw that two-yard pass to Winton, that drove me crazy because I feel like just put him in the game. But maybe in this game without um, – Without Trent Brown, they felt like they needed to go a little bit, a little bit more heavy. So that's the only, that's the only thing I'm gonna, only I'm, gonna, I'm only gonna attribute Win, uh, Winton's get, getting more snaps than uh, Moreau. Um, but it did, it did irk me throughout the game to just not see, not to see that, especially in the in, in the in the red zone. But they did score a lot of points. So, but 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 as far as that goes, um, anything else on the ugly side that you guys want to talk about? Yeah, I, I, I'll i just speak on that a little. Well, ugly side, we, we, we go a long ways. But for, for me, absolutely, I thought um, Witten, I don't even look at him as a tight end. He's an offensive lineman. He is. Offense. He's he a is. blocker, and he, he, he knows assignment detail. He's a disciplinarian. He's a veteran leader. That's what he's there for. That's his role. He is literally the Lee Smith role that we used to have, pretty much. Yeah, perfect, perfect comparison. Mm -hmm. But Moreau, yeah, we may have a game where – Moreau might be something we'd look into a little bit more uh, snap heavy in the red zone because maybe potentially we're having a tough time running against a better front or something. I don't know, but uh, still a little frustrating. But uh, I'm like you said, 34 points on the board. What are we saying? We should have had 42. We should have had 45. I mean, yeah, exactly. 34 points. You didn't have a real preseason. You didn't have anything on deck. You're on the road. There's no fans in the crowd. I mean, what's it's weird. So 34 is good. Uh, the only the biggest bad thing I want to point out is Carl Nassib. Mm. Okay, let me Who? talk about that. <laughs> let me talk. Do you guys know? I, I may have texted you guys. I don't know if I did. I probably did. But uh, do you guys know how many snaps he had on defense? Yes, I do. I can actually look it up right here. It's I got like 40-something, right? No. Gosh, no. He had 20. 20 snaps. Do you know what he's – you know what we paid this man? I mean, we could have gotten Everson Griffin. We could have gotten. There's so many. I, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. Again, it could be a schematical thing, right? Like, like. But Cleveland Farrell had what 58 snaps. I, I'm just. I'm just saying. We paid a lot of money for Nasib, 
And I, I was expecting like, hey, I, I honestly was not like the biggest, hey, he's about a six sack guy, but hey, maybe we see something. And then he's not even on the field and we're not even getting much pressure on the quarterback. So uh, and, then, and, then the, and the one and, and, the, and the missed tackle on the goal line really bothered me. I mean, you oh, can't. You, yeah, you got you got to wrap up. You cannot just try to um, big hit or hit yeah. stick. Um, yeah. You know, um, you yeah, know. McCaffrey. Uh, McCaffrey. That's just that's just ridiculous. Yeah. You gotta you gotta finish it. So that bothered me because we shelled out a lot of money for this guy, and um, you know, with the pass rush not looking too great yesterday, that bothered me. Um, I'd say the other thing that bothered me, um, Arnett. I just I, I I know a lot of people are like, oh well, his hand was hurt at Ohio State, and he played well with the cast, so he'll be fine. A uh, few times, I mean, he, you gotta wrap up and tackle. I understand your arm hurts, your hand hurts, but if you can't form tackle. Uh, we're playing the Saints, man, and they have some talented Kamara. All the, they're going to find matchups against you if you're going to put that on film. But, uh, yeah, I, for me, number one, Carl Nassib and the struggling pass rush. I don't know what's going on with the defensive line. My, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll bow. Go ahead, man. Um, blue chip, blue chip versus um, how, how, how do I say it? Blue chip versus um, blue collar, and they went with blue collar. And I felt like – and then and you heard – I think Rich Gann did the game yesterday, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so Rich Gannon pointed out immediately that on that play where they did the out and up, and they got um, they got uh, uh, Damon Arnett to yeah. to bite on that play. Yeah. If Eric Harris, oh yeah, just looks at the football, it's an easy interception. Oh yeah, I, I, I was like, oh. I, what, what are you doing? Like, I mean, because because that ball that ball by by Bridgewater should have been thrown up the field and not to the inside. What's the, what's that ball to the inside? Like oh, it's, it a, it's I mean, a bit should have been a pick, should have been a pick. Not to mention the pick that um, Merle should have had. Not to mention the pick that um, um, Joiner. Uh, Joiner, but Joiner did play well yesterday. The slot, the slot. I, I didn't hear nothing from the slot yesterday. Right. So, so, so I, credit, so credit due. Yeah, so credit due. So I mean, he's a guy who takes a lot of heat. I, I, I gotta give him credit when he plays well. But that is like you know, to me, I, I feel like you know, you gotta make that play. I mean, they chose you to be the starter. There is no question about it. You gotta be able to make that play. I mean. Because I mean, if not, I mean, I don't have time. I don't got time. For, I've seen. I've seen. I think we have decent linebackers now. I have. I'm done with with bad safety play, and I don't. I, I don't want to see it. Um, you're here, so let so, so let's get it done. You quote unquote know the scheme, so that's great. So, so so let me so let me see you perform yeah. it because that because you should have you should have been in that spot to just. I mean, you could have like fair caught. That, that 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 duck that um that Bridgewater yeah, threw that was that wasn't that wasn't a great pass. At least bat it down. I mean, like yeah. The, and then the way he, the angle he took, horrible up the field. I mean, he was be, underneath behind him, extending an arm, and I was thinking like you had plenty of time to decipher how to approach that no. tackle. And okay, maybe he wasn't looking, so he lost sight of the ball. Uh, the wide receiver was right in front of you. You ran past him. So well, there is a free safety. Oh. There, there, there is a free safety on the market who does know how to look for the football. Yeah. He looks. Uh, uh, unfortunately, he looks for other things. But I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, no, that's all but, I was thinking about. No, when you look at yeah. Eric Harris, I just I'm thinking like, man, they, these guys need to make a major move here on Monday, Tuesday, and call up Earl Thomas and bring him in. Now I get it. Uh, got character issues. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you got to bring in somebody there in the back end. Those guys are too young. Who's the stud on this defense? Oh, That's yeah. the question I have. Like, who is the stud on this I, defense? I got to go with number forty-two, man. Littleton. I think Littleton was all over the place, uh, other than Abram, the obvious. But I thought, I thought you could Abram, could, Abram could be that one. He he he, he could he, if he keeps playing the way he's playing, yeah. he could get. There. Littleton, Littleton really showed up yesterday too. Uh, you know that, that he can last run, play. man. God, he can run. Blitz, he, he looked fast. He, yeah, he, 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 he was run. in there with Farrell. He was in there with Farrell on that stop of the with the fullback there, which was a bogus call. I don't understand. That was really ugly. I don't know why they didn't go back to McCaffrey there. Can but, I say but, one thing about? Um, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I'm just saying. Like Littleton, I thought earned his 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 uh, free agency there. Malik, we hear all this stuff about Malik Collins. I, I yeah, Malik Collins. Kind of I thought that day. was kind of a dud yep. for me. Uh, you know, Mo Hurst got a half. Of, I think they split half a sack with. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot who else got the, the other half of that sack there, but uh, they didn't give it to all the way to to Mo Hurst. Um, but yeah, I mean, Abram was all over the place. I mean, wow, wow. 
I loved it. You know, 24 and 28 yesterday were the players of the game. Yeah, I, I mean, the way I look at it with Abram is just that, you know, we were talking about before, like he's the box safety and this and that, and he's not about – do people understand how many snaps he took <laughs> yesterday at free safety? He played uh, free. every play. I think he played every every defense. He played play. a lot of free safety. Uh, he played um, great yesterday. So that shows that if they think he's fast enough and has a good enough prowess in deciphering the passing game, uh, I, I'm just so – I mean, I, I highlighted him this year. I thought he was going to be that. But the way he came down hill to make tackles – it was humid. It was hot in North Carolina. Like it was, you seen players hands on the hips in the fourth quarter. The yeah. only guy I didn't was Abram. He was get it. Let's go. Yeah. I seen him pumping up Mullen when he had, when he deflected that pass in the end zone, like he, he wanted it and not mind you the play we just talked about the play. We just talked about Robbie Anderson with that slick double move on our net. He gets caught with the flag. Eric Harris blows the potential interception bat down tackle who tackles Robbie Anderson that play when he's 30 yards off the screen. Abram busted his ass. He could have, he could have jogged up and kicked up his heels, and mm, that's six. He tackled him the step he came in the end zone and tried to rake that ball. And that, mm-hmm. that, those are the kind of guys. Colton did that before. Remember his rookie year chasing down an interception. Yeah. Like, it, it just gave me like when I looked at that, I was like, okay, he's a pit. He, he's a pit bull, man. He wants to play. He wants to hit you. Um, and, and I just thought thirteen tackles, uh, one tackle for loss. Um, again, playing some free, playing some strong. Mm-hmm. I think his role will get better if the front seven starts to find a little bit more of a gel with the pass. Can he play down. free in the pro level? Oh, absolutely. He, absolutely. Why can't he not? Because I'm, because I'm, I'm, think, I'm thinking if if 25 can't get it done, I mean, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna have patience. I'm not gonna have patience for certain things anymore, and that's one of them. I, I just. I mean, if that's what it comes to, if schematically we're able to do something a little different with how we want to look at the strong safety um, in Gunther's scheme, which don't really want to talk about Gunther's scheme too much. but Oh, I, we have to, though. Uh, we will. We'll <laughs> get there. But I, I feel like Abram, just what he put on film yesterday, like he, he covers sideline to sideline, and he tackles, and he hits. And with Littleton, like, you know, in, in Katowski, he's probably going to be out a couple weeks and stuff like that. But eventually, as this young defense gets together, um, I don't care. Just play him where he – I mean, he's shown he can do it. <laughs> and uh, Very I, not, Troy Polamalu-ish, you know. Just go ahead, go out there. Everywhere. Right. Just be – he's there. everywhere. That's a good point. I mean, Troy was, like, so unorthodox. He'd jump over the snaps. He'd, he'd, right. he'd, he didn't even have a position. They like they were just like, all just right. Just go out you're... there and make a play, and that's that's it. He wants <laughs> yeah. to get dirty. He wants to get hit. He wants to – you know, you saw him, John, with, with McCaffrey the whole game. That's and cool. he is a dog, and that's what we want on this team is we want a superstar dog. And, you know, we didn't get to see it last year, and I'm, this is yeah. the year we need it. And uh, I do think – I'm still on board with, with bringing in Earl Thomas. I think that he could learn from somebody. One-year like, deal. Prove one it. One-year deal. Prove yep. it. Stay out of trouble and, and go out there and, and knock some heads in. I mean, with Damon Arnett and, and um, uh, Ty- Tyvon uh, – Trayvon. Ty- Trayvon, Trayvon, Trayvon. I mean, that's a lot of that's young right there, man. You got to have somebody in the back end. And Eric Harris is, you know, God bless him. You know, he's good, but I don't think he's he don't think he's like the man back yeah. there until Abram is the man. I think Abram's going to become the alpha in that in that backcourt there. But uh, very exciting to see. You know, he picked up right where he left off back in game one last season. Um, but he he's got the mentality. He's got the blonde hair. Did you guys see that? Uh, Simon yeah, I did see that. Look, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he came to play, and I dig it. Yeah, the Cover Three Deep Raiders podcast. Um, you can reach us at Cover Three Deep um, on Twitter and Instagram. So I love Trayvon two five two seven. I love you, but when the fullback is still fighting for yards, um, get your head yeah. back. Get in there, buddy. Get in there. Get in there, brother. Because he almost he almost got the first down um, while Trayvon was like kind of kind of like like cheering because he thought that they thought the play was over. Sorry, so stop. He, he yeah. thought it was over. So please, so, so please do that. You know who else got a sack yesterday? Benson Mayo. Just saying. Oh God! Yeah, somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I, yeah, I was thinking that man. We, uh, I mean, he, and, 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 and he caught and he cost he cost hardly nothing. He cost he cost absolutely nothing. Um. The Raiders playing with a lead. Uh, that is Gruden. One, 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 one of his pet peeves. I mean, at 27 15, I believe, right? Um, the number one thing that teams do all the time, and this is a number one thing, when teams get down by two scores, their next drive, the first thing they do 
run the football. Like they're they're gonna go back to the beginning of the game. Let's let's start the run. Let's not get let's, let's not get too far behind the sticks. Let's, let's try to create a third and short so we can keep the drive going. And you know, to me, like you, you, you got you gotta you gotta get a stop there in that stop in that, in, in that spot. You know they're not gonna go air curry out and go four wides and throwing the ball down the field. Uh, at some point, Gunther. When you're sitting here um, as the Giants are driving against the Steelers on the, top, on the quarter of my eye, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's go Giants. We need we need we need all AFC teams to lose. Um, <laughs> Gunther, Gunther, you know, when you have a team that's going to go short, 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 short all the time, you have to be able to at some point in that um, in those drives to jump those some of those routes. Yep. Because they're just going to dink and dunk, and then when they get to the goal line area. McCaffrey's gonna they're gonna give it they're gonna give it to one of the best players in the world and they're gonna score. I, I didn't think I thought they did a good job against McCaffrey. I've sat and watched the Jamal Charles games. I've seen some horrible games against scatbacks like that. I thought they, I thought they did a pretty good job against them except, oh, yeah. except in the red zone. Um, we, I don't know your thoughts about Gunther, but it, my biggest pet peeve is like when it's when it's third and when it's third and eight, don't have your linebackers drop to ten yards. Like the the guy the guy the wide receiver just gonna sit in the middle and get the first down and go down. It's it's just and that dick and dunk that's it cuts you slow. Uh, drives me crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna jump in real quick on the Gunther thing. You know, I'd love to see some more like safety blitzes too. You know, there were no there's no pressure at all. I thought I thought Bridgewater was looked very comfortable in the back. Uh, he picked apart the defense, picked apart the secondary. Granted that these guys are young. Um, I mean, Robert An- Robbie Anderson. Is, is really fast and uh the other wide receiver on the other side there i uh, forgot his name but um those are that's some good uh, that's some good wide receiver action there and i just didn't feel like he was uncomfortable at all um the defensive end play i i hear that you know um furl jumped inside outside inside outside just pick a position man if put if you draft him as a defensive end play him at defensive end let him work we saw what he did towards yeah. the, end of the season last year if it works at tackle put him at goddamn tackle yeah, it's, just, it's all. I mean, you have uh, Malik Collins, you have Mo Hurst, uh, you have uh, Hankins. You know, uh, just play your defensive tackles and let them eat up in the middle, and then your defensive end. I just, I didn't understand that at all. Uh, I thought the the linebacker play was solid. Um, obviously, we um, what's his face got hurt there. Kotowski uh, and Morrow had to jump in there, and he. I mean, I know he's fast and he's athletic, and I didn't understand why he was covering. Uh, McCaffrey one on one with no safety help there. That was kind of confusing. But um, that drop pick was huge. Yeah, right. And but like I said, I thought Littleton played well. Littleton had a, was all over the place. Abram was all over the place. Uh, and and just to contradict what what um, Sean was saying about Damon Arnett, I thought he played okay. I thought he was okay. I mean, he bit on one route. He you know he he did get hit mixed up a little bit in some tackles. But yeah, he could have made some, some better plays. But I thought overall for a rookie uh against it was dj moore is the other wide receiver there yeah you know he, yeah he played pretty well i thought he contained him for the most for the most part um i have no problem with it i had no problem with it um but i know the defense is going to get better um the offense is going to have to carry this game through the next three or four games here but i think the real test comes next week out of uh, out of all the games until we play kansas city the saints are going to be a, a, a they're they're stacked all sides of the ball, all three yeah. phases. Yeah, that, that that's a good team. I think, like, when you talk about Arnett, too, like, I was tough on him, but uh, if you guys know Chris Reed, NFL, he breaks down a lot of Raider film. Um, the play where Arnett got beat, it was a six, uh, six-man six pressure blitz. So we brought the house. So, you know, the ball is supposed to come out quick when you, when you blitz, right? Yeah. So Arnett jumped that first move. You know, which is great because, you know, if Teddy had thrown the quick, but, you know, he bumped out of it and that's why he, he knew he got beat and he tried to grab him to withhold the touchdown. So those things happen. He'll look at it in film and he'll understand it. He'll know next time, okay, we're, yeah, we're bringing a six-man pressure, but I got to give a little bit more of a cushion before I see that ball come out, um, before I jump it. You know, this isn't Ohio State, right? Yeah. The, you know, it's a better team. Um, and overall, I thought, like, with Gunther's defense, yes, if you're not getting good pressures, pass rushing, you can't also float people back. It's just a recipe for disaster. And a, a quarterback like Teddy, you're just giving him comfortable rhythm throws. I mean, he, some of those throws he's making, I was like, man, that, I could do that. Like, we're not 
you know, challenging him enough, right? Um, um, and it, a little concerning, it may have been the game plan because we didn't know what Carolina was because they had so many new players and things and new coaches and new scheme. But it's a little troublesome because I know we're going to get to it in a minute, as Ken said. Um, guess what? Uh, Drew Brees and Sean Payton looking at our film from Sunday are – they're 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 excited. <laughs> they're they're excited to see some of the communication issues and things, and, and they're gonna find ways to attack us. Um, so you know, Gunther, whatever happened, we, we sealed the game, we won it, we got out of there, we we survived. Let's just be honest. Like defensively, we survived. We gave thirty points to a, a brand new head coach and a rebuild and a brand new free agency quarterback. Um, but it, it's gonna have to significantly improve, like Ken said, and I I think it will. Like we got to start pushing down mid season toward middle of the pack. Yeah, I, 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 th I, th I think that's the biggest thing here. So we'll take a quick break, and then we're going to come right back, and we're going to talk about um, previewing the Saints. I mean, that's going to be the the big task here for the for the Raiders here in the first game in Las Vegas here on the Cover 3D Raiders podcast. Back on the Cover 3D Raiders podcast, Dwayne Douglas, Sean Oahu, Raider, and Monster Mash Ken out here chilling. Uh, talking about the Raiders after a victory. It's always good. Victory Monday is always good. You celebrate Sunday, Monday, and then you get serious about who you're going to play um, and the next time. And it's going to be the Saints. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be Sean Payton. It's going to be um, Taysom Hill. It's going to be all, all, all the, all the gadget, gad, gadgetry, if you will, that is um, Saints football. So um, thoughts about that um i think when you play the play the saints it's 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 simple but it's really complex at the same time they're about the screens and the seams like they want they will they will screen you to death they will um they will see they will hit the seams passes with the tight end to death they will do that all day and all night against you and i think what you have to do what you have to do for the raiders here is just take make sure that sean payton takes you seriously so, because he, what he's, what he's going to do in this game is he's going to challenge the Raiders early, on like on a fourth and seven, maybe at the fifty yard line, and say, "We're playing the Raiders. I, I don't care. We're, we're, we're beating this team whether Michael Thomas plays or not, right? Whether Michael Thomas is a liar or not." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I don't wish death upon him. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. <laughs> But um, you have, but you have to be, but you have to be, you have to be able to get a stop and take them seriously. I, I think what, the best way to take them have them take you seriously is get out to a get. get the, this, is a, this is a game where I might, might, I might say get the ball first. Get, get the ball first. Take us, take an eight minute drive. Put it, put it in the end zone. Let them know that you're they're playing an actual NFL team and they're not playing those Raider teams from the past, Ken. No, I agree. You know the one other game that I was not I wouldn't say excited to watch but anxious to watch was the Tampa Bay New Orleans game yesterday obviously they're both early on our schedule uh New Orleans is has always been a consistently good team since you know the baghead days and you know I think we took Aaron Brooks and then they got better after that or something <laughs> like that but uh yeah you know I I I like Drew Brees a lot I think Drew Brees is very underrated quarterback you know he's he's consistently good he's got good players around him that defense looked sharp yesterday man they were flying everywhere and that's oh, one yeah. thing that scares me that we don't have is is you know uh, half of our defensive squad if not most of it is new and they're all playing next to each other some guy next to it, you don't even know you just barely met the offense on the other hand i think we're okay i, I think well i think this game's going to be a high scoring game um i don't think drew Brees is going to be rattled by us at all i don't think that uh um, we're going to slow down that offense, to tell you the truth. I, I just feel like um, with the crowd factor there, you know, a few weeks ago or months ago when, when we didn't know what's going to happen, I said they were going to win this game. Now I'm not so sure. And, you know, I think the Raiders will win everything in my mind any given Sunday. <laughs> but it's going to be a little bit harder with no crowd, no excitement, no juice, no electricity there uh, when you get this weird fan uh, radio thing going in the back there, which, which was so random. Uh, I, I think that, you know, Michael Thomas is going to eat. Uh, Kamara is going to do his thing. Um, 
So it's going to be up to the offense to really Let, show up. Latavius. Latavius and Jared Cook and Jared Cook. They're going to show out. And uh, I don't know what the game plan is on Gunther, but I know all eyes are on Gunther right now. And uh, I hope I'm wrong. I hope the Raiders go in there and sock him right in the nuts, man. But uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think if you look at Drew, he's such a polished um, passer of assignment football and finding where the easy throws are and or setting up the throw to go down the field. If you look every year, he has like four, three, four games where he's just bad. I mean, like he's had them. I mean, they are there. I, I, I know this. Like I've watched games where he's thrown for like 180 and like never done anything. And it's not always against a great team or defense. Sometimes he just has those struggles. So I think we have to find some way to get him out of rhythm. It doesn't look like it might be to pass rush. But if Michael Thomas, even if he plays and he's limited or, you know, he's humped up a little bit, we, we need to just pressure. We need to clamp down a little bit in the line of scrimmage, in my opinion, and, and just just play. Hey, we have nothing to lose in this matchup. It's yeah. an NFC opponent. It's not an AFC opponent. We're already one and zero against another NFC squad. Um, just play a little bit more physical, a little bit more challenge and contest up front. And guess what? The the biggest thing in this game to me is Alvin Kamara. I'm not even worried about Drew Brees. I just the way Kamara sometimes can get eight to eleven catches and just get seven and get eight and get six and get seven and get eight. And it's just the rhythm that he creates when Brees can't find any other outlet. It's scary. And that's what you said, Dwayne. Like then it's like, okay, Jared Cook down the seams, thirty-five yards. No one's even yeah. around him because <laughs> all our linebackers are like, where the hell is Kamara? Because that guy yeah. is just lickety split, talented, and he catches the ball so fluid. Yeah. So. Um, it's going to be an interesting matchup for Gunther. Um, we just kind of have to go, if, if anything, like I said, I, I, we may surrender the yards and the points, but if we can just get a couple ki- timely turnovers, a strip sack, a tip ball interception. Holding the field goals a couple times. Holding the yeah. field goals a couple times. That, will, that could be a difference maker, um, yeah. at least on that side of the ball, as far as our offense. I, I, we'll probably get that a little bit later, but I, I think it's a whole different challenge. But, yeah. I, um, I could foresee, like, us a recycle from that crazy win we had with Crabtree making the, yeah. the two-point. I, I think it's going to be the same kind of game, to tell you the truth. I, I mean, as long as it ends the same, I'm, I don't care who catches it. Heart attack weeks who, in a row. Why who not? Catches, whoever catches it that way, I, I don't really care. Um, one thing that I don't understand about NFL football is football is like, you know, everybody's supposed to be big and tough and strong and all this stuff like that. When Taysom Hill comes, to the, comes into the game and they flank out Drew Brees and there is a safety in front of Drew Brees, can somebody explain to me why somebody doesn't knock the shit out of Drew Brees for being a wide receiver on that play? That's a really good point, man. <laughs> is there like a gentleman's agreement? Like, I'm just saying it because, 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 because he's a he's – a, he's a, I'm sorry, I'm not a gentleman. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I play one on TV, though, but I'm not, I'm not a gentleman. Like, so, like, if I'm playing – if I'm a football coach and you are sitting there and you want to have Drew Brees as a wide receiver, I'm going to have Abram sit right over the top saying – I'm going to make sure that we're staying sure when you're going to take some hill in the game, you better put um, Winston over there because because I'm going yeah, to I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pound the hell out of because he's because at that point, he's a wide receiver. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. And I, it's funny. And you, you notice that. And I think it is like you said, Dwayne, I think it's people like, hey, if it's Tom Brady, if it's Drew Brees, if it's these established old veg, better any quarterback really. Unless you're, like, that. unless you're like Baker Mayfield or someone. Everyone's no. like, oh, we hate you. You're a Honestly, I agree with what you're saying. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, when we used to play, like, when, you know, when people feel the punt and the punt hits the ground, no one catches it, and the ball's just sitting there, right? And you're waiting for the, the ref to either blow the whistle or someone come up and touch the ball. Mm-hmm. Well, I play. You can go up and bomb people that are just staring at the ground looking at the ball. Yeah, exactly, yeah, People yeah. don't do it often because it's like, hey, that's a cheap shot. But at the same time, man... I don't want Breeze jogging out there with his Wrangler jeans on, thinking he can just, you know. I, do. Just, like, you know, I don't I'm, care. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm, guess I'm what, sorry. Though? Who will agree with you on our defense? We've talked about him a lot. Oh, Abram. 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 Abram's going to be Abram. like, Abram. Even, if, Abram. even if Gruden told him don't do that, you know Abram's going to at least jab why him. Are we not, why are we not doing that? Yeah. Like, like, Gruden, Gruden, Gruden would be why, like, why do teams not do that? I don't understand that. He is a wide receiver on yeah. that play. Hey, he needs to get knocked out. And some teams, take him back off the field if you don't, if you don't want that to happen. Take, 
take out the kicker, right? Like on a kickoff, some college yeah. teams will will put a person. You take out the last line of defense. He's weak. He's just take him out. Crack. They put him. You, out. you don't even need to hit him that hard. They're not used to getting hit. And you know, going back to what Gruden, you know, Gruden will tell Abram, "Don't do that." But wink, wink. You know. I don't think God. Abram. I think Abram. We saw it in Hard Knocks. We've seen his style. Uh, I, I don't think he's the guy anyone can really calm down. I think in his own mind, he'll, he'll, he'll have to learn. I think there's going to be some times this year where he absolutely goes in on people, whether it's going to cost us some flags or uh, scuffles. But um, uh, me personally, I'm all for it. We, we, he's, he's the best thing we have on defense until everything else emerges. So bring it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I hope he comes. Hey, you know what? And Taysom Hill, like you said, those gadget plays and stuff. <laughs> I would assign. I would. I would tell Abram, you, you're a missile. You take, yeah. Hit, hit, hit yeah, that yeah, guy. Please. Hit that yeah, guy. Right. So Sean Payton make goes. Him, all right. Make him pass the ball. So Sean Payton looks at his play sheet. He's like, all right, Taysom's not going back on the field the rest of the game. <laughs> I, let's just. Let's like just seriously, I, I, I don't know. I, I agree, man. Drives me crazy, man. I, I see. I see. I see quarterback just stand there and do nothing. And I'm like, dude, you you play the whole game, hit the quarterback, and you have a free shot at the quarterback, and you don't take it. Drives me absolutely crazy. No, um. Man. Offensively, do they? Do you try to do you try to do the ball control like the Giants versus the, um, you know, Jim Kelly and his Rubel, or do you just say, uh, or you just open it up and say, Derek, dude, you, this is this is your time, dude. Like you know, you, oh, oh, we'll we'll mix it up between running four wide receiver, but we gotta we gotta throw it all over the place. I'm, I, I... I have a hard time with this. I think what you said is balanced. We were pretty balanced in the opener. Yeah. You Stay with that. To, I, I think you, you, you have to, but I, I'll tell you what I want to see a little bit differently. Uh, uh, Waller was looking good in the first half, went away. Renfro had a nice couple plays. I was getting real excited that we we're about to get him working, went away. Um, you know, uh, also Brian Edwards had like 49 snaps, but he had one target, one catch for nine yards. So. Uh, maybe they're holding it close to chest a little bit. So I would like to see four wide and put Brian Edwards in the slot and rugs out opposite on the other side. It, just see, but because the Saints corners are really, they're re did you guys see Mike Evans? He, he could not he get shut out. Yeah, he got shut That's out. That's Mike Evans. I mean, I'm not saying we don't have nice quick guy, but Mike Evans is an established star wide receiver, top five in this league. So um, is Godwin. And it don't even matter. It don't even matter quarterback. As he still abuses and he, he they were getting under his skin though they oh were, yeah big time and they'll yeah. do the same to our guys so gooden has gotta be i think i would like to see a little bit more misdirection because i think the saints are gonna say we're gonna cut the head take away josh jacobs and then pressure car yeah. and, and, and don't, don't forget sometimes. don't forget the two coaches um todd bowles and dennis allen who like to who like to to they don't play conventional defense they want to um, you know, blitz and do all kind of crazy stuff. So you, so right. if you catch him in those plays, you can get big plays out of Beat those. Him. Can and Carr actually in his career is good at that. So he, no, he I'm I'm not worried plays. about Carr. I think I think you got it right. You know, you play four wide. Uh, you get Jacobs involved more. I can see Jacobs having like seven catches this game. Um, Ooh, you know, I, no, I, I really think it could happen. Maybe there's like 10 or 12 catches with the running back core altogether, even with Inkled in, in, included there. A lot of underneath passes. Um, I think, you know, you, you pick up that same game plan where you had rugs, you get rugs going, uh, throwing some gadget plays there. But I, I agree. I think the defense is going to come in hot and they're going to come after Carr. But Carr's really good about getting the ball out. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be some underneath stuff going on. And um, I'm not worried about the offense. I really think that Gruden's got it. He's got these weapons. Carr's got these weapons, and we saw it. I'd love to see Edwards get involved more. Uh, I agree with you, Sean. I was getting excited to see Renfro get some some plays called his number yeah. called. Uh, and you know, if Waller Waller was Mr. Third Down yesterday. Maybe we'll get to see you know Renfro go back to him, uh, third and Renfro. But you know what? I just want to see the offense continue. To continue. do what they do, yeah, exactly. Yeah, build and build yeah. and do not take a step back because we always we did that a couple times, where the offense looks like they got the ball going, then they'll put a, a, a zero burger up or something in a couple quarters. Yeah. Or, you know, we scored every quarter last game. It's got to be this beautiful. It was. Yeah. That was, that was and, they, was. and they scored in the third quarter, um, Sean. Yeah, yeah. And, and what I thought was, you're right. Finally breaking the third quarter curse <laughs> hey, from last year. I was big, but I, I thought for me. 
it was interesting, right? Like the first possession, we went three and out. I was like, normally Gooden's got his like. I, it, so it was a little bit like up in the air. So um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we try to go for the hot start at home, like you say, receive the ball. But regardless, I think if we're like around the twenty-eight to thirty-four point scoring margin, we're gonna be within a big play of winning. Well, yeah, so, exactly. exactly. If we do that, if we do that's that's the offense. I'm not even saying the defense anything. I'm just saying if the offense just says. Hey, Gooden, here's your play sheet. Call your best plays. Pick your parts. Um, let's try to get seven and a quarter and maybe a field goal. And then guess what? We're, we're going to be around those 28, 30 points. And if we get lucky, we get ball bounces the wrong way, a tip pass or something, uh, um, it's ours to take. But uh, I think we're the underdogs. But I believe this team has the talent. They just really need to, like, mold the pieces on defense to, to help the offense a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I just, I mean, what they, what they just say, what you have to avoid is what the Buccaneers couldn't avoid was the turnovers in your own end, because oh. that's, because, because that's where, that's where Sean Payton is going to eat. That's where, oh, Kamara, yeah. I mean, you can't overcome those. So, so, so you, you protect the quarterback like, like you've been doing, um, and, and and do do whatever you can to just not turn the ball over. Still, be, you, you can be aggressive without turning the ball over, and they just have to yes. keep doing. It. No, I think I think the difference, though, you know, Brady is obviously coming in to a team that, you know, he's still getting used to. Uh, their running game was working. You know, they had a good uh, – the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they had a good running game going. Uh, their defense was really good. You know, Devin White was making some plays. Oh, there. yeah. Were some plays. They got athletes but, on that defense, no yeah, question. Yeah, they do. And that that's what was scaring me more than the offense. Uh, Brady, I just feel like he's lost a step for sure. I mean, he's very you – know, he threw in some accurate passes. But then he threw some really weird ones at the same time. Um, so that's why I'm not too concerned with the offense. You know, let the defense come in blitz. Um, and I think Carr, you know, has these weapons where he can throw four four yard passes and, and they'll turn into eight to ten yards. So let it come, let it rip. Uh it just just it's just the defensive side of the ball that's really got me worried here. Can they make the crucial stops? Dwayne, I think you said it. We gotta get some kind of turnovers here. Um, early, 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 early. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, early, and, yeah. And that's going to, I think that's going to determine the game. Maybe I'll, I'll mark it here. Whoever wins the turnover battle wins the game. Yeah. That's, you could go down the NFL every week. Yeah. That's, that's you, I mean, this game more or less. Football. Football. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a yeah. high scoring game, but I still feel like the, Absolutely. the, the Raiders need to get at least plus two on these guys. Right? Do you, you know? just, did, do you just go out there and just say, you're going to win this game without Kamara? If you're if you're Gunther, like I'm gonna I'm gonna make it so like you can't do nothing with Kamara. That's or, hard though. Or do they move him around way too much to for that for that be for that to be possible? I, I think it's a little bit of that, but I, this is me. I felt like this. I feel like it's a little bit of the same of what happened in Week One. Like I feel like if you saw Littleton blitz the couple times he did, he he comes he comes fast. He comes wide. I mean, he just missed a sack. Yeah, he could play. Just missed. I mean, really quick. Um, so I think it's hard to dial up his number to blitz as much when you have to account for he's probably our quickest linebacker that can cover CMC. And now he's got the same thing with um, Kamara minus Klitowski probably won't even be playing. So it's hard because I would like to dial up uh, Littleton a lot more at the quarterback um, being that we had so much lack of pass rush. Um, again, like it, it's tough. You look like... <laughs> Arden Key and uh, Mo Hurst like had more pressures and they had the like, 20 something snaps. And then you had Cleland and all these other guys. Uh, it's, we got to figure something out there, man. I don't care where it comes from. I was saying when, when you dropped Nico off. Roberts, yeah. Yeah. When you, I, I, I think I think when you, I think you dropped off for a second. I was telling, um, I think I was saying um, to Ken, like if, if he's, if he's that, if, if he's, if he's really good inside Cleland, leave him there. Yeah. Like you know, it could be because, because because I think an edge rusher is a gift and like, like 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 if you don't have the gift to edge rush then don't sit there and try to make somebody into an edge rusher because he's not if he's really good on inside like the last play of the game listen I give him credit like that was he blew that play up good for him um, they did a great job I mean I think if they pitched it to basically if they pitched it to McCaffrey on that play it would have been him and Trayvon Mullen on the outside yeah. and that would have been I mean, I love Trayvon but I'm not sure if I'm not sure if he would have been being able to make that tackle so yeah. to me. I mean, if he's inside and he's doing good, then just keep just keep rotating the other side. And if he's winning, if he's winning, if the win rate is that high, keep it keep it going. 
Keep it going. Just makes it, to, to me, to me, to me, to me, it just makes more sense to do that. Um, that you can kind of, I mean, you, you, you're never going to justify the pick. I mean, Josh Allen. No way. Yeah. He, he should have been the pick. And, he, <laughs> and, and, and this defense, he probably would have, you know, 10, 10, 10, 10, 11 sacks a year. As, as far as well, that goes. Before, before we jump the gun on that, though, I, I will say this, though. Like I said earlier, if he continues what he did at the end of last season, and he continues it this season, but that's going to be up to Gunther and Marinelli. They got to put him in position to win. Yeah. I think he's a really good defensive end. I just don't think he's that good of an interior pass rusher inside. I just don't think it is. And if you are, then yeah, then Josh, uh, Josh Allen or the other guy that the, uh, who was the other defensive tackle there that they should have. It doesn't matter. They should have took a defensive tackle if you're looking for a defensive tackle. You took a defensive end because he needed a defensive end. He was the best available, in my opinion. Uh, based off the college performance that he had, I I think that there's still a lot of games to be played, but he's got to be put in the right position to play him. He's put on some weight. Crosby's put on some weight. They complement each other well. I want to see salt and pepper back, man. Give me extra salt and pepper on that sub sandwich. <laughs> Question. It's like, you know, we talk about put on weight, put on weight, put on weight, but um, was, was it's only one game, but like was Crosby maybe better? Without having, because I mean, because 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 there's been a yes, lot of really, yes. there, there've been a lot of really sleekly built pass rushers. Like you know, yes. like um, Derek Burgess was not a huge huge defensive end, but damn it, that dude was in the backfield every five seconds, um, yeah. get sacking the quarterback. So maybe that was a mistake. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm listening. It's only one game. If he has four sacks against Drew Brees in that offensive line, then we're gonna say something totally different, right? But um, but but I, I wonder if that's like more of a like you know, not everybody has to be that big hulking dude you have to i mean quickness is part of the game right i don't I think, think that, I, I i don't think he got gained that much weight i think it's more muscle i think he's still pretty slim down he looks pretty good he almost got home a couple times there and you know he gets one sack we're not we're not having this conversation mm. he was disruptive he had some tackles for loss he was in the backfield a lot i thought that uh crosby played well i i'm not i'm not too upset about it he just didn't get home and that's not entirely his fault i mean he was close. The, they missed a call. It was blatant holding. You guys saw it. Everybody saw it. He oh, was yeah. Dick, that was embarrassing. I, he, I couldn't he believe gets a sack, even for Raiders standards. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he, he, he gets, dude. let me ask you, though. I want to put it back on you guys. If he gets that sack, are we talking about him right now, about his weight? I don't think so. Maybe I mean, still, I'm a, yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm, I'm personally, I'm personally, I'm personally, I can let Crosby, I can give Crosby a season. He did, he, he did enough last year where I can just say Crosby or whatever. I, I just think with, with Cleveland, I don't have a problem. If he, if he, even if he's not worthy of that, fourth, of that fourth pick, if he is a functional starter and he is a, and he is a, and he is a above average run stopper and with, with occasional pressure up the middle, I can, I can actually live with that because the person he is in the locker room, like I can, I can do, I can do, you can hopefully maybe, maybe draft somebody else to be on the outside and admit that maybe he's because because he does a good job on the inside um but you know if if, if he's not going to be what you want on the outside i don't want i don't want to waste those snaps with him on the outside and when that, you and when, when you have arden key when you have um you know um you know we don't uh, know what we have yeah I, I mean maybe it's a a third and 11 where you can have um littleton um come off the edge stuff like that like i Please. i, I I don't care who gets the pressure. I am, I, I am a let, 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 let whoever whoever can get to the quarterback get to the quarterback. And that, that, that's just my thing, and and we'll, and we'll see we'll see what happens as far as that goes. But I mean, he can't he can't be if, find a spot for him, and then if he's really good at one spot, just leave him there. In my yeah. in my opinion, in my opinion. And, and I think I think what they're still doing is justifying the pick. I mean, how does he have a snap count of fifty eight and Carl Nasib has twenty in a game where you're not getting pressure we had according to pff we had 10 pressures i don't even <laughs> i don't know teddy did do a good job of stepping up when the pressure came out wide and, and completing yeah. passes and he did you i mean he's athletic he used well give me a delayed time. blitz right there then so this, you. This, this, so you can blow his blow his ass up when he tries to come to i'm, I'm well, person a lot today but, yeah. Um, <laughs> but you're right yeah but blow, blow him up on that play you know you're right but i i it, okay it's we don't have time for experiments like not this it, week not this not, week. Well, not this. Well, week. not any week now. That first not game. this season. That's... I mean, we're it's year three. Gruden and Car. I mean, you guys. We have to make playoffs. If you don't make the playoffs, people are going to question everything, top to bottom. 
Um, maybe that's not the best way to look at it, but um, Cleveland, man, he, you're right, Dwayne. Pick a spot and let him go there and just develop yeah, and just yeah, move yeah, on. And, and yeah, if other no people – and run back the film from Carolina, and if other people look better on the edge, great. Because I saw Furrow get sucked in twice terribly. One when Teddy took off and run, uh, another run outside – and he just got pinned inside by a one-handed push from a tight end. And he was trying to do some spin move or he something. Smack he's that like, away. Like he's, Dwight, <laughs> like, like he's Dwight Freeney or something. He's like, bro. Yeah. You know, I got I to gotta rewind here for a second. And I might I might have gotten a little heated with – were you guys talking about Crosby adding the weight or referral in the beginning? No, I was Cro thinking, Crosby. I thought – yeah, Crosby. Crosby, he had we were on Crosby. Yeah. Okay, we were on Crosby. Referral and, and Sean, like, because you walked away, I did say that, and Dwayne re regurgitating this here, but, you know – Put him at the defensive end. Leave him there. He ate at the at the later part of the season last year. So I I just it's got to happen. There's a lot of new faces on defense. All eyes are on Gunther right now. Um, Marinelli's got to show out too. This is this week. We need this win. We need to we need to win in our in our home. Next four next four next four games. I just I mean like everybody talks about them being two and three going into the bye week. I expect I, if they're going to be a playoff team. I, you gotta be. I, I feel like you go. You go four. You go five hundred against these next four games, and then you're three and two going into the bye week, and you're feeling good about yourself. I wish I could have flipped these two games. I would love to play Brady early, and then play Drew Brees a little bit later. You know what I mean? Because I mean, because I, I think I think I think Brady might be all figured out by the time, um, yeah. by the by the time we get him as far as as far as that goes. Um, AFC West. Uh, the Bengal. I mean, we were fortunate to win. I think obviously the the Bengal. I mean, the Chargers were fortunate to win as well. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I, I, which was which was really was really crazy. Um, the Chiefs. They do what they do. We know that. And then the, and then the Broncos play later tonight. So we're um, so they could be uh, everybody in the division be one and zero if the Broncos win, which is you know which is tells you that the division is going to be maybe may improved as far as far as that goes. I'm looking around the league real quick. Do you feel a little bit? Do you feel a little bit better? Like maybe if about like so like maybe like the trip to Atlanta might not be as daunting as a, a task because they could be. Let's be honest, like they could be dumping salary by the time because because if they're not good this year, that coach is out. Like you know Matt Ryan is who knows what's gonna happen there. Like I mean like I'm, it's a long way to go, but I'm just saying just 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 the just the optics of their loss. They get a lot of points to Seattle. No, I I looked at their schedule. Um... I think that these next four games are going to be really tough. Um, and then you get like kind of a mediocre teams from historically and, and then kind of the way they played yesterday. Uh, I think this team is looking like a nine and seven team, eight and eight right now. I know earlier I said it was 10 wins. Uh, and I'm purely basing this off the defensive play yesterday. If the defense showed up yesterday, I would think that they win a lot more games. But the fact that they played so poorly – I just don't think we're going to play. We didn't play complimentary football yesterday. We played wow. complimentary offense. We had mm -hmm. very, 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 very even offense there yesterday. Both sides produced. But the defense was just not good enough. And a team like uh, an unknown um, Carolina Panthers team, granted that McCaffrey's going to eat, he's going to do his he's going to do his damage no matter who he plays. But Bridgewater throwing 250 plus, you know, that I mean, that's it's unacceptable. No sacks, that's unacceptable. No turnovers, it's unacceptable. Um, I just don't know if the, if the Raiders can – if they can sustain and win two or three games going into the bye weeks, I think we'll be Two okay. and two. Two and two next four. Two and two, we're okay. But it's going to be tough. If they drop this Saints game, man, I don't know. They're going to have to find a way – uh, Abram is going to have to, he's going to have to inspire everybody on, on all sides of the field here because it's going to be tough and they got a lot of tough games coming up. Sean, question for you about, Sorry. about, about Gunther here. Is he one of these guys who just, who's just going to sit there and play his style or is he ever going to, I mean, adjust? I, he, he's he's going to stay to his style. Right. I, I think he is. I mean, he kept Joyner in the slot. The only thing I like that he let Abram kind of flex around the safety positions, but he, he's going to do what he's going to do. He believes in the only system he's done, and he, he's employing it. I mean, you were getting beat. You had a double-digit lead, and it was clear, like, there was – and let's not be – if, if we're honest, like I think there was about three critical drops. The Panthers dropped some balls. <laughs> like they, they could have eaten a little bit more. I know DG Moore had, uh, I believe, two of them. But I was like, I was pretty surprised on that token. But uh, 
Gunther needs to employ some kind of multiple defensive look, something a little bit more exotic because, you know, people are going to see what he's putting out on film and they're just going to take the fundamental routes that they can get. And um, it, it's not good because we want to pair, like Ken said, we want, you know, we want complementary football to, you know, showcase at least in, you know, eight to ten games a year where we feel like our defense is doing their living up to their bill and the offense is well we win it or not whatever but at least we're there's a gap there but right now <laughs> i it's scary man it, the, the saints are they've been they live in the playoffs and uh they got a great hall of fame probably potential coach and obviously a hall of fame quarterback so a lot on deck but i i, I don't have any positive i don't have any optimism with gunther none none me i mean me, me either I'm, I'm not sure i'm not sure if i um, a, a change during the their change change during the season is not gonna do is not gonna do uh, much either as well. I mean, if you look at it this way, like Cable, the people say was one of the reasons we went for Colton Miller. Well, a lot of people say the reason we went for Clement Farrell was because, right? Gunther said that was his guy. So if he doesn't end up working out, like Ken said, maybe he does have a better sophomore year like Miller did. But if he doesn't. Hey Gunther, we're giving you guys. We we got all these picks for you, and if some of these things don't start working out, I mean, we 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 paid two of the higher tier free agency linebackers in free agency. We went out and got Malik Collins. We went out and did we we got uh, two cornerbacks high in the draft. We, we you know yeah. he's getting his wealth of picks, so something's got to give. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the answer is there, and I mean, if it's Marinelli getting promoted there. I know, I know it's week one. I, I get it. I get that. You know, there's still a lot of football to be played, and, and these guys still got to learn how to play with each other. But uh, I think next week, next Monday night, it's going to yeah. be really telling to see if this defense can do it, can pull us through. Because right yeah. now, I agree. I, I, I agree with Sean, too. I just don't have any faith in, in, in Gunther. And uh, you know what? I'm not even going to blame Gunther. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blame Gruden because Gruden needs to be a man and pull the, pull the trigger. Yeah, and, and I also think, and I thought we'll leave, we'll leave, we'll kind of leave it with this too. Is like he has to coach as if he has he he has a bad defense. Like 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 just just be honest with yourself. Like when when you're up twenty seven to fifteen, like like coach like coach like you have a bad defense, and 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 you know and be and continue to continue to be aggressive in that game, and then you'll be fine. But that's probably the biggest thing that I, that I would have. You know what the weird thing is is I don't think we have bad defensive players at all i think we have some really a lot of talent there and we've had in, in the past years we've had the defense talent. is coaching ken you know that. it's the coach <laughs> and, and coaching. that's what it, that's what the thing is i think the talent is there i mean you look at abram you look at mullen you, uh even the shades of what arnett was doing yesterday uh the line the line play is good i think Farrell could be really good it's just the coaching and uh, paulie if he was a good coach they would have never, never let him go in cincinnati that's he'd my be, thing he'd be the head coach so, yeah, so exactly. So there you go. That's, that's my thing. So who's controlling the snap count? So so if Carl Nassib's getting 20 snaps on defense, but who went out and got him free agency? Was that all Mayock saying, oh, he'll fit your system? Or was Gunther like, yeah, I'll take him. Yeah, you'll take him, but he's playing 20 snaps. 20 snaps in a game. That, that, that Benson Mayoa, like you said, I mean, what, what, what is that? Like, that, that's failure of rotational snap. Arden Key came around the edge good twice. Yesterday. He played like 29 snaps. I mean, Maurice Hurst, who got the sack, was in the 20 range of snaps. But look, he's Cleland's on there, 58 snaps a game, hands on his hips in the humidity. I mean, and, and like you said, guys, to be fair, he's moving them around inside, outside. So w what are you developing there? Like, what is the criteria for you to go out and do that? To me, that just doesn't make sense. Like, you have to, you know, you have to figure something out there. Um, I, it, I just don't have faith. I, I feel like certain coaches do things, and I've said it before, I, when I really was just done, done, done with Paul Gunther was the Houston game last year when we had an established way to win that game um, by getting a stop. And we allowed DeAndre Hopkins to just eat in the slot, one of the best wide receivers in football. We didn't change anything. No scheme, right? You said, Dwayne, he didn't change nothing. Nobody went, under, nobody went underneath him to take, to, take, to take that away. So Nobody was, doubled, yeah. boxing him, shadowing no. him. No. Just, no. Oh, 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 third Linebacker, oh, linebacker, oh, linebacker. linebacker. And, linebacker. So, yeah, you know what, <laughs> and, I don't, what I understand is if, if us as, as podcaster wannabe analysis can point this out, why the, f why the hell can't 
they do this in the in the film room. Like I don't understand so, that. I so don't Dale, get it. So so De La Soul is my favorite rap group of all time, and they had a song called Ego Trip. And the ego of those of, of coaches in in the league will not allow them to admit they're wrong. They'd rather lose than admit they're wrong. I, I, I've said this for years and I totally agree with it because I don't understand. There's certain things that are so basic and football is probably more complicated than we, th- that, than we think it is. And it's probably simpler than they make it. So like, I don't understand why, I, you know what I mean? It's just what, that's the way I look at it. And like, I don't understand what the hell is going on where you have, and, and, and that Hopkins game where Carr, that was one of the, 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 the Houston game and the, um, the Lion game where just cars, like, car was lights out. Lights out. You should not have lost either one of those games. I mean, the, the, the play the, the Tyrell Williams was just quarterbacking at the highest level. Um, and it just drove me crazy that we lost that game because that, that's when I knew we weren't making the playoffs. But to watch D Hop, who is just, listen, he's incredible. We saw he torched the Niners. So Robert Sala sure took a job um, oh, last yeah. year because because he might not get one this year because the Niners are not going to be as good. But um, but but to me, like you have to make an adjustment there to take that away, not just say, "Oh, the rest of the league is doing." I'm not worried about the rest of the goddamn league. I'm worried about the Raiders. Yeah, uh, it, it's tough. It's just. It's and tough. I'm the and I'm the rainbow rainbow Raider. I'm the one who's <laughs> the, most, the most positive person in the room. So yeah. I, I'm somewhere, you know, I'm, in the I'm middle, right? Side. In the middle, no, middle, I'm, middle. I'm, I'm more on the positive side, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. But, but you know, Sean's Mr. Hawaiian black rain, rain cloud over there, and <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know what? It, it is. I we when it comes down to it, you know, all of us have invested, you know, probably at least sixty years of fandom here oh, yeah. in this room, and we've seen the bads, mostly bad. Um, we see what these other teams are doing that are con- like the Saints that have turned their organization around and, and their perennial playoff. Win, and they win forever. Yeah. Look yeah. at the Rams. The Rams put together something. You know, the Rams were shitty for a long time. You know, uh, yeah. you know, there's these teams that do it. And I, I do think that the Raiders have the talent on both sides of the ball. And uh, it's just going to go back to the coaching. And if it's something that's an ego thing, and I know – there's nobody bigger with the ego in the NFL than John Gruden, um, and his haircut says it alone. But uh, I think that, you, you know, you, it goes on him. That's why I'm not super upset at Gunther, because it's Gruden that is the manager of this team. He, he mm-hmm. you know, he's the one that's got to make the call here. Like, hey, do you want to make a change? No, no, we'll give him another shot. We'll give him another shot. It's not working out. This Saints game is going to be the one. You got to play this game. You got to win it to show that you can beat Kansas City in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. That's it. I think you, I, I'm feeling your drive, Ken, because to me, it's like you hear that term. They call it like a measuring stick game. We kind of thought we'd beat Carolina. We were favored by three from Vegas. Okay, we won by four points. We're kind of where we needed to be. This is like we need to see this team fight back and like compete with a contender right with a playoff contender yep, I agree. Um, and, and that's gonna come less from the players like the way we use rugs was so brilliant last week i think it's gonna only the tip of the iceberg there i think edwards will start to get some targets i think waller should be a big big factor this week because of how they can't handle it they, they can't handle waller, waller this week their corners are, their corners are great they, they yeah. may they may i'm not gonna say take away but they they may keep rugs underneath they may take away brian edwards they may they may do that but um so some things gotta happen but schematically this is where you make your do as coaches as a staff you know what's coming in you have an extra day to prepare this week right it's a monday night game you're at home you're in the comfort i know not crowd wise but you're at home where you guys been at the facilities you really need to employ some tactical things to take calculated risks on offense maybe special teams little you know, fixes and things we see on film. And defensively, I, I, it really hinges on what Gunther is going to come up with because I hope to God that Gruden was shaking him down knowing that that's one of his best friends in real life, Paul Gunther, is telling him, like, that wasn't good enough. That's Teddy Bridgewater. And we gave up 30 points, and they had some drop passes. They very well could have score, outscored us. <laughs> like, yeah, um, we understand they have CMC. Well, guess what? you can't boohoo and cry about it here comes alvin kamara <laughs> so uh exactly. it's put up a shut up time and yeah. um it, it's really i think coaching is important it is so important mm-hmm. we've seen guys like jared goff go to a super bowl matt ryan go to a super bowl well 
in my mind, as much as I'm a critic of Derek Carr, he's right there with Jared Goff and Matt. As Ryan. far as talent, no question. As as I, talent, I agree. I agree. Matt, with that. No question. There are no, there are some things I don't like as much, but I, I'm just saying like they're kind of that same that tier. They're that, that tier. tier. They're yeah. smart. They're pocket passers. But hey, if other teams can win with them, Gruden, if your defense isn't isn't up to status quo, you're gonna have to move on. So tough decisions coming for Gruden. You got potentially a fiasco with Trent Brown that doesn't want to play football. And you potentially have an in-house fire you may have to make with Paul Gunther, which we kind of all saw coming with the Marinelli signing. Mm -hmm. So it's tough. I mean, this Saints game is a measuring stick game. You go out and you lose 48 to 10 or something, some things are going to – it's not going to look good, you know, now than having to go on the road the next game. But uh, uh, coaching is everything in this league, and I think we did a good job of that on offense, but defense – Man, Gunther, I don't have, I don't have any. I, don't I, have I think, I think, you know, and I'm going to look ahead here, uh, you know, to to the Patriots game. If we do drop against the Saints here, which it's it very likely, I think, I think they can go into New England, especially because that crowd is not there. It's it's warm, you know. I think that they can beat the Patriots and Cam Newton. You know, Cam Newton didn't really impress me in the highlights yesterday. Um, you know, did you guys see him get his chain yanked at the end Crazy. of the game? Yeah. But I, I just think that I almost kind of want to see something happen bad if it's for the sake of losing Gunther. And I hate to say that because it is only the second game, but our, our half of Raider Nation, their minds have made up about Gunther. And it's not Probably wrong. more than that. Yeah, and it's not <laughs> wrong. Yeah. And if it sucks that, you know, if, there, if it sucks that like I said, we're just podcasters and we, we, we tweet stuff out, but we're seeing it. We just want these guys to win, and I don't think Gun- Gunther's it. I just – prove me wrong. On, yeah, if if they win and they, they do they, – they hold them to 14 points, that's a win in my book, uh, you know. Yeah, 14 points. I, I, I'll take that any day. I week, will, if we win and we hold them to 14 points. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm crazy. And I know you guys say I'm a bad black cloud, but let's not forget, I picked them to win 11 games this year, more than both of you. That's because I pumped you up, man. <laughs> we, we were like, yeah. uh, I, I am a negative Nancy, but I, I have yeah. the, 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 the diehard optimism yeah. is, is boiling within, yeah. man, and I like what we have. No problem. All right, guys. Um, listen, thank you for listening to the Cover 3D Breeder podcast. Um, we really appreciate you guys. It's, it's, this is the time we're waiting for. We did we did all the pre-shows. Now we're talking about real, actual football. Yes, sir. Um, and, and the Raiders win 34 to 34 to 30. Should have been 34 to 17, but uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that next time. And we'll see you next week, guys. All right. All right keep calm and Raider on. Listening.